Hey, 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 good morning, Facebook. <clears throat> and we are live. Good morning, Facebook, and good morning, Instagram. Nicole Cooper here. And I have been out of pocket for the past week uh, traveling. So I wanted to hop on today. I want to keep today's message um, short and sweet. I swear I got so much stuff to do, y'all. Um, but Nicole Cooper here of businessismyministry.co. And also the founder and creator of Your Six Figure Year. Hey, Angel. Hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. And so I'm excited to be here. Um, if this is your first time joining me, my name is Nicole Cooper. I am an online business developer and a marketing, um, I don't want to say marketing, but vision coach. I turn teach people how to turn their visions and ideas into a real successful business. Um, and I also help people gain the clarity that they need by being able to identify their God idea versus their good ideas. So today I want to talk to you guys. I hop on here um, normally every Tuesday and Thursday. I do it when I can, right? Um, but I want to hop on here today to talk to you about vision. What did I put on here? <laughs> what did I put y'all? Vision. I think I put vision, um, obedience, and provision, something like that, right? But this came from me reading this book this morning. Y'all, I love this book, Becoming a Millionaire God's Way. Make sure that you guys go and get this book. It is written by Dr. Thomas Anderson. And the principles in here, you know, a lot of people, when you talk about becoming a millionaire um, and doing things and you say God, it just creates this big, abrupt fear. Um, because most people think that God wants you to be broke. And that is such a lie. You know, I had to do a speaking event in Austin on Saturday, and I talked about the fact that why would God create all of the earth and then say, I want you to go sit in a corner and struggle and be deprived of everything I created as his children? Like, why would God really want us to suffer as his children? Um, it just doesn't make absolutely any sense. But what I want to uh, talk about today is about the power of being taking action, um, being obedient to the vision that God has given us. Because I feel like every single one of us has a vision, you guys. God gives us all a vision. You know, I remember seeing a documentary years ago on HBO for people who were probably dealing with different challenges in life, whether they may not be able to actually speak or whether they had some form of a handicap or whatever. But the guy who was being featured in this HBO documentary, he couldn't talk, I don't think. And he had to use like a pen um, or he, it was something with his speech. But what he said was, listen, we're just like you inside of this body. We just have we just have external challenges that hold us back from being able to get the words out the way that you do. But we're no different. We feel the way you feel. You know, we we have the same desires that you have just because I'm in a wheelchair and I may have to use, you know, a device to communicate doesn't mean that my brain isn't working. And I think a lot of us feel like, um, you know, for whatever reason, there's different people in the world that are favored over others. And that's just not real. God's the word of God says that God is no respecter of persons, meaning that he does not favor one person over the other, but he gives every single one of us the exact same opportunities um, and the exact same goal, which is a vision and a purpose in life. And I talk about Jeremiah 29, 11 all the time. For I know the plans that I think towards you, plans to give you a future and a hope and not of evil. And also Jeremiah 1, 5, when he said, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. I declared you a prophet unto the nations. So today we're going to talk about vision. And I think I put vision, obedience, and provision. Where did I put at the header? It's so funny. I get these titles and I just put them up. Um, but I was reading Millionaire God's Way, guys, okay? And uh, the section that I read today was called Light of Fire, all right? I'm just in chapter three. Um, it's called Light of Fire. But one of the things that he does in here is he talks about how God gives us a vision. And in order for your vision to actually manifest, guys, it takes action, right? It requires action. But I tell people all the time with every, oh, thank you, Angel, <clears throat> vision, position, provision. All right, cool. Um, but 
one of the things that, that I tell people is God, when he gives you a vision, he will give you provision, meaning that whatever God tells you to do, he's going to equip you with what you need to bring it to pass. So that means that in a lot of times, guys, the vision that God gives us is so much bigger than us. It is so much bigger than us. And it's intimidating and it's overwhelming and it might seem far-fetched and it may seem merely impossible. But guess what? It needs to be that way because you are the instrument of God. God has, he gives you a vision to do things in, in a realm that is in his realm, not the human realm, right? God wants to use you. And to, to be able to perform and to create things that God wants to use you to do, right? And so when you get a vision, okay, when you get a vision, a lot of times you will not have the details of that vision. But what you will have is the, the instructions for the first step. Okay, the instructions for the first step. A lot of times, guys, we want a blueprint. I know me, I'm a strategist. I'm a business development strategist. So I work with people on um, turning their ideas into an actual business framework. And we go through every single piece of it. You know, who's your target market? What is your offer? What are you selling? You know, what is the pain of your client? We go through all these different aspects when we're building out people people's business models. But God works, the, I tell people all the time, the kingdom of God is backwards. OK, the kingdom of God is backwards. And so when we talk about how God works through us and gives us a vision, it works the complete opposite of what we're used to doing when we come up with our own plans. I didn't pray. Let me pray really quickly. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for the inspiration, God, the vision and the provision to get on here today. Father God, to share this word with your people. I ask that you use me. Let me be the, the hands, feet and the mouthpiece for you, dear Lord. Touch the ears of your people, Father God. Give them a word that is going to build them up to be the mighty men and women of God that you have created them to be. Let me decrease as you increase as we impart and share with them whatever it is that you will have for them to hear today, Father God, to get their daily bread today. God, we thank you in advance for the supernatural miracles, opportunities and experiences and encounters that are going to happen into the, into the lives of your people. So bless me right now, Father God, as I am a vessel for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. All right, cool. So here's the thing, guys. When God gives you a vision, it's bigger than you, okay? But what God does is he gives you the first step, okay? He gives you the first step step. So you won't know how it's all going to play out. You won't know where it's going to lead you. I tell people all the time, one of my favorite shows is The Amazing Race. And it's all about knowing what the first destination is, right? God is going to tell you, okay, Nicole, your first destination is to get to Atlanta, Georgia. I don't know what's in Atlanta, Georgia. And I don't know what's after Atlanta, Georgia. All I know is my instructions is to get to Atlanta, Georgia. Do I sit back and say, well, God, I don't want to go to Atlanta until you tell me what's after Atlanta and then what's after that and what's after, like God, tell me what the whole picture is before I take the first step. No, that's not how God works. He will lead us into that first step. And it is up to us to be obedient, to take action, to actually be able to do the work so that we can get to that next place to get the next clue. Now, in this, um, in this chapter, and, and for those who are just joining us, I see several of you guys hopping on. So, hey, everybody coming on. Nicole Cooper here. And when um, I'm reading this book, okay, and, and one of the things that he talks about is when you have your vision, um, okay, when you have a vision, okay, God wants you to take action on it. And this, he explains it in here. He says, he talks about a passion, right? He talks about passion. He talks about attitude in this book. He talks about you must develop a passion so you will actually move forward. Attitude is how you think. Passion is how you feel. Becoming financially literate. He talks about it in the, in the form of finances. Becoming financially literate so you won't make foolish investments, but you must then have a passion to act on your knowledge. So he talks about passion, but then he talks about vision. Vision with action will produce. A vision without action is just hallucination. Okay, vision with action will produce a vision without action is just hallucination. He goes on to say it takes a combination of passion and discipline to succeed. Okay, I'll repeat that. It takes a combination of passion and discipline to succeed, right? Passion changes what you uh, what you have. Passion changes have to into want to 
and you start to enjoy the climb as much as reaching the top. So when God gives us a vision, you guys, he gives, obviously, a lot of times it's going to spark a drive and a motivation. I tell people, you know, the Bible also talks about um, my people suffer due to a, a, what is it? The people perish due to a lack of a vision and a lack of knowledge. What is it? Without a vision, people will perish. Okay. And if you have a vision, what happens is that vision creates, it ignites you. It gives you a passion and a drive to be able to go towards something, to go and do something. But what happens, guys, is the longer you suppress that action, the more you begin to get into the human side of you and you begin to doubt and you begin to second guess and you begin to pull yourself, you start retreating from taking action and you can suppress the ability to have clarity about what your next steps are because you begin to overthink it. But when you have a vision and you begin to get clarity as to where that vision is telling you to go, like what the next steps are for you to act and engage in that vision, what happens is, is when you take that first step and you start moving forward into doing that next thing, there's an excitement, there's a drive, there's a passion and there's an enthusiasm, what happens is momentum kicks in, right? We tell people all the time, in order for you to really have a level of, of if a, a, it's just like a fire, I don't even know how to explain it, but momentum comes from movement. You have to move, you have to do. You know, I tell people all the time, you know, I, I personally, and, and I am, um, I'm a little gangster, like I'm a little gangster, like I'm, I'm from LA, Right. And I come from this background where everybody wanted to be in Hollywood. Everybody always talked about what they going to do, who they knew. It, it was it was the most annoying thing living in L.A. and connecting with people and everybody wanting to tell you, well, yeah, you know, I was hanging out with Jada and Will the other day and I'm about to I'm about to do this record deal with Dre. And I, I mean, it was like the most boastful, annoying amount of I don't know I hated it growing up where you're around people who always talk about what they're gonna do and who they know and how they make this stuff happen but you never saw the fruit and so I grew up in business now learning like move in silence let your results do the talking right because we get excited and we want to share and we want to tell everybody what's going on but it's like listen stop telling everybody what you're going to do and just do it because what happens is is when you start putting out there all these seeds of what's going to happen and you you start putting there's a there's a scripture in there that talks about um you know where the, what happens when seeds fall some fall on stony ground some get swallowed up by weeds some you know it just it, it it gets spread out to where the seeds never get to fall in the soil that it needs to to begin to produce next thing you know you got people around you talking you out of what you're supposed to be doing and telling you that it's not going to work and you know you start dealing with all these different challenges but when you get a vision and you start making a decision to go forward and move into that thing that momentum that happens from your movement begins to create a level of passion and drive and it starts building even more momentum and what happens is, is things start falling into place and coming together right it starts falling into place and coming together and the story that he uses in this which is so phenomenal if you guys get a chance um, go and read the story of Joseph and it starts in Genesis 41. Okay, so I can't go through the whole thing. Genesis, I mean, the story of Joseph is phenomenal, right? But let me tell you about um, why you must understand the vision that God is giving you, how to position yourself properly so that you can operate in God's provision. Because if you talk prematurely, right? If you tell the wrong people what it is that God is doing in your life, they will try to destroy your destiny. And the story of Joseph is just like that, right? So I don't think I can go through this whole thing right now. Um, but the story of Joseph is basically, um, he, he, he had a dream. Joseph had a vision, and Joseph went and told his brothers, I'm going to read it to you, it's, Joseph, it's Genesis 37 and 5. It says, one night Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the field tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly my bundle stood up and your bundles all gathered around me and bowed low before mine. His brothers responded, so you think you will be our king, do you? Do you actually think you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more. 
because of his dreams and the way he talked about them. Soon Joseph had another dream. And again, he told his brothers about it. Listen, I've had another dream. He said, the sun, moon, and 11 stars bowed low before me. This time he told the dream to his father as well as to his brothers, but his father scolded him. What kind of dream is that? He asked, will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow to the ground before you? But while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father wondered what that dream meant. If we fast forward um, into uh, uh, Genesis 37, 18, um, it says, when Joseph's brothers saw him coming, they recognized him in the distance. As they approached, they made plans to kill him. Here comes the dreamer, they said. Come on, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns. We can tell our father a wild animal has eaten him. Then we'll see what becomes of his dreams. But when Reuben heard of their scheme, he came to Joseph's rescue. Let's not kill him, he said. Why should we shed any blood? Let's just throw him into this empty cistern here in the wilderness. Then he'll die without our laying a hand on him. Reuben was secretly planning to rescue Joseph and return him to his father. So if you go forward, what ends up happening is the brothers end up, um, he ended up getting sold into slavery, right? So Joseph ends up in, sold into slavery. He ends up in, uh, in the, what they call Potiphar's house, right? And a Potiphar was like an Egyptian officer, okay? And Potiphar was captain of the guard for Pharaoh. So he worked under the king. And Joseph was in this house. He was working for Potiphar. Potiphar's wife tried to come on to him. He rejected her, but she didn't like the rejection. So she went and said that he tried to rape her. Then Potiphar put him in jail, right? Then the Pharaoh ended up having a dream. And they needed somebody to come and interpret this dream. So they called, we were looking around for somebody and they found out that Joseph can help interpret dreams. So Joseph goes and interpret the dream. And basically he lets them know that there was a famine coming in the land. Because he interpreted this dream, somehow they gave him like a position where he was able now to start getting prepared for the famine that was going to come. So I'll read, uh, let's see, it's Genesis 41 and it talks about uh, 41, 46 through 49. Joseph was 30 years old before uh, when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. Now in the seven plentiful years, the ground brought forth abundantly. So he gathered up all the food of the seven years, which were in the land of Egypt and laid up the food in cities. He laid up in every city the food of the fields which surrounded him. Joseph gathered very much grain as the sand of the sea until he stopped counting, for it was without number. So basically what happened is there was going to be seven years of plenty. And then after that, seven years of famine was coming. So Joseph made a decision like, listen, a famine is coming. We need to start storing up grain and storing up seeds and preparing for the famine that is coming in the land, right? So seven years of plenty was here. Everybody is living in their abundant life. They doing living their best life, right? They're out here doing what they want to do, how they want to do it. But then after the seven years of plenty became the seven years of famine. And what happened is the famine was in the land and it was so bad that actually it ended up being where only Joseph um, and the Pharaoh, obviously he represented the Pharaoh, right? Only they had food, okay? Only they have food. So let me go ahead and read that. Um, then the, this is uh, Genesis 41, 53 to 57. It says, then the seven years of plenty, which were in the land of Egypt ended and the seven years of famine began to come. Um, as Joseph has said, the famine was in all lands, but in all land of Egypt, there was bread. So when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. Then Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, go to Joseph, whatever he says to you, do the famine was over all the face of the earth and joseph opened up all the storehouses and sold to the egyptians and the famine became severe in the land of egypt so all countries came to joseph in egypt to buy grain because the famine was severe in all the lands so here it is this guy who had this vision many many years ago who just so happened to tell it to the to his brothers he thought he was protected he ended up getting sold into slavery went through this whole potential hardship but the vision was still there. God was still making provision even in prison, right? Even in prison, even though Joseph ran his mouth 
and put himself in a position where his vision was exposed and compromised, God still put him in a position to have provision everywhere he went to be able to live out that vision. He was still allowing him to be positioned wherever he was so that that vision could be manifested, right? And so it goes on to explain that Joseph was the only one in the land that actually had food, okay? And it goes on to say, and Joseph um, gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the grain which they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. So when the money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, give us bread for why should we die in your presence? For the money has failed. This is what Joseph said. Then Joseph said, give your livestock and I will give you bread for your livestock if the money is gone. So they brought their livestock to Joseph and Joseph gave them bread in exchange for the horses, the flocks, the cattle of the herds and for the donkeys. Thus he fed them with bread in exchange for all their livestock that year. And, and this, the book, it just talks about by the end of the year, Joseph not only had all the money in the land, he also had all the livestock right? His own brothers had to end up coming to him and realizing that his dream came true because they did have to bow down to him by coming and asking him to feed them, but he embraced them. He was happy to see his family and they live happily ever after. But what does that mean? When God gives you a vision, guys, you have to get positioned so that you can receive God's provision. Doesn't mean like Joseph's positioning was not necessarily in the most favorable route, but what happened was Joseph understood he had a vision. And even though he went and shared that vision with other people, he was committed. Hey, Joe, my brother's on here. Um, he was committed to do what he had to do to honor the work of the Lord. And so what ended up happening is, is even in prison, even in, um, you know, even in a compromising position where somebody is saying that he did something to them that he really didn't do in all these different scenarios. He was connected to his vision. He understood who he was and he stood his ground. He stood his position with knowing that God, there was something that God wanted to do in and through me. And I'm going to be available no matter what the circumstances are to be able to honor that call on my life. So that means that whether I'm in a prison and somebody calls me to translate a vision, I'm going to do it. Whether I am in Potiphar's house and the wife tries to do something to compromise, I'm still going to stand my ground. Let them know that I am not guilty of that, right? But I'm not going to deny who I am because of my circumstances is the point, right? That no matter what my circumstances are, if God gave me the vision, he's going to make the provision. That no matter how hard things look, no matter how many challenges I face, no matter how many people speak against me, no matter how many people that try to destroy my vision, no matter how many people try to speak ill of my vision or try to, to, to you know, put me in a position of compromise so that they can alter the vision. If I am positioned to receive the vision that God has given me and I do what he calls me to do, I take the next steps, I move forward. I'm taking the action, I'm making the progression, then God will make provision no matter what your circumstances are, y'all. No matter what your circumstances are. One of the things I've come to the understanding of is that I am the child of royalty. My father is the king of the throne. He owns every single thing on the earth. And it does not matter how challenging, how hard, how frustrating, how evil there, how much evil exists in the world today because of the promises that he has given me in the book of life here if I continue to meditate on this word day and night and I continue to make it life to me even in my mistakes y'all look I am so heavily flawed it is not that I've perfected anything it's that I continue to meditate on this word if I continue to meditate on this word I continue to repeat the promises that God has given me I, I continue to operate with the expectation of the vision that he's given me and I allow myself to constantly be in the position to be used by him in that vision He's going to make provision. And that means that I cannot compromise what he's called me to do by allowing myself to get pulled or distracted or to actually abandon that vision. Because at the end of the day, that vision is where the provision is going to come from. Guys, sometimes our, our lives become extremely complicated and hard because we abandon the vision. 
And God is like, listen, I put this path together for you here. You know, there's a scripture in here that talks about a plans, a, a man's plans, his own plans. Um, like it's basically like God is laughing at the plans that we create for ourselves, right? It's like we come up with these own plans and tell God, all right, God, this is what we going to do. And he just laughs like, all right, I already got a plan for you. Your days, I numbered your days before you were born. He already had a plan. But the bottom line is this, guys, in order for you to truly operate in a place of favor, um, you know, just a place of, of, of true honor, true honorable favor that God wants to give you. You have to be obedient and surrender to the vision that God is giving you. You have to be positioned, meaning that you're always allowing yourself to be available, to be used by God. And what happens is God will continue to give you the provision. There's so many things that God wants to do in our lives. And it's unfortunate. I, I, t I told the... Um, the women I had did this the speaking event on Saturday, I said, it's, it's amazing that every single one of us was born with a vision and with a purpose, but we spend the rest of our lives trying to convince ourselves that we are worthy of it. Do you know what that is? Like we're sitting around here trying to convince ourselves that what God promised to give us, that we are worthy enough to receive it. And so if you've been in that place, guys, where you've been second guessing the vision that God is giving you, you've been, um, you know, uh, disqualifying yourself, you've been ruling yourself out, you've been walking in doubt, you've been walking in shame, you constantly give yourself a million reasons why it can't happen, then I want to encourage you to do a couple of things. First of all, you want to go to God and pray um, and really just seek the face of God. And if you don't know God, then ask God to help come into your life and to build a relationship with him. Um, and I'm not getting into if it's a him or her or this is not the time for the religious talk. I don't do debates. Um, I actually operate according to a relationship, not religion. And I would just say, guys, listen, seek the face of God and just say, God, come into my life. Please show me that you are real. Show me what it is that you want to do in my life. Give me guidance. Help me to, to discover this journey of life and show me like what I'm supposed to be doing. Like I remember asking those questions when I was a kid. Like, God, why was I born? I used to just stare at myself in the mirror and be like, why do I have these color eyes, but I'm blind? <laughs> like, why am I so tall? And why am I this? And why am I that? Right? I would ask all these different questions and I began to understand that those questions began to give me the, 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 the clues to start leading me to build a relationship. So number one, step number one, guys, is go to God and ask. Go to God and ask what is it that he desires to do in and through your life. The second thing, guys, is get familiar with this amazing book. You know, I'm a huge reader, but there's nothing that beats this book right here. And it's so funny because the more you read the word of God, the more you find his principles and all the top bestsellers that are out here for personal development and self-help and all that stuff, right? This is the best self-help personal development book you can ever read. And if you have a hard time understanding it, there is different versions that, that break it down. Somebody told me the other day, it was like, if you get the message, there's this book, uh, there's a version of the Bible called the message. They was like, that's the black folk version. Because <laughs> it's like, look, let me tell you something. Right. But it breaks stuff down in such a practical way that you begin to understand what the Bible is trying to say. So it doesn't feel like a Shakespearean European, um, you know, book from the 1300s. Right. So read the, the read the word of God. And then the third thing, guys, is act in obedience according to the vision that you have. Do the work. You have a vision. There's things that you've been seeing. There's things that you've been desiring to do. Take action on it. You know, I'm just starting to take action on something that God showed me in 2000. And I think it was 10 or 13. Right. God gave me this big vision. I remember being on the phone with somebody and I was like, look, I see this, this, that, that and that. And I was trying to get that person to partner up with me at the time. But he was in a completely different industry. He was feeling it, but he couldn't go too far with it because it was way outside of his league. And I found myself like putting it all on paper and I put it in these binders and I started going to all these different startup companies. And I was trying to pitch him at startup companies. And I would be like, y'all, this is the next big thing. And they were just, none of them got it. They just didn't see what I saw. And I did it from Memphis to Austin to Florida. Like I kept trying to get people to see this vision and they didn't see it. It just wasn't their vision. And I kept putting it on hold because other people did not validate it. And it's so funny. 
I ended up in all these different seasons of frustration. Like, God, oh, I don't understand why it's not working out. And he's like, because you asking everybody else <laughs> to approve the vision that I have given you. When you start acting on the things that I showed you to do, then you'll begin to get the answers that you need to all these cries and, and, and questions that you have. And finally, in 2019, after six, 10, however many years it's been, I'm finally starting to take action on that thing. And it's amazing how the steps are just coming together. It's just all like... It's all just like a puzzle piece. Bloop, 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 bloop. All starting to come together. So whatever God has shown you to do, told you to do, called you to do, instructed you to do, inspired you to do, the vision he gave you to do, go and do it. Act on it. I don't care how far-fetched it seems. I don't care what your circumstances are because he came to me in my worst season. Like, all right, you ready now? Like when I have nothing left to give, do, uh, create. He It's when it came back to me and it was like, all right, are you ready? Um, so... Go to God, seek, his, seek him in prayer, ask him for guidance, read the word of God, and then act on the thing that God has called you to do. So that is it for today, ladies and gentlemen. I have so much to do. I hope that this helps you. Um, the message was, what was the message? <laughs> I am so bad. It is vision, position, provision. All right. That's how you will take your vision, get positioned, and had experienced God's provision. All right. Well, thanks you guys. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to close this out in prayer really quickly for those of you that are watching and you want to ask God to come into your life. You know, this is not some like super crazy encounter where we're a bunch of hippies that do acid and we're on an island on our own. We're like real practical everyday people that just really want to learn how to apply the word of God in a very practical way into our lives to do the things these called us to do because we know that we are born and created for greater and we are committed to discover discovering what that path is by allowing the supernatural of God to lead our lives so that we can begin to become the miracles that inspire other people through the work that we do. So let's go ahead and let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for this time, God, to honor um, just your word and to honor your guidance uh, in this in this season of our lives, God, with your people through, the, through this live, through Instagram, through Facebook. God, I thank you for this time um, to just be able to share a little bit of your word and to help them to understand that there is so much that you desire to do in and through them despite their circumstances. Um, and to encourage them to just seek your face and to have that encounter with you. God, I pray right now for each and every person that is watching, Lord, you know exactly who they are, what their needs are, what their prayers are, what their cries are, God, what their desires are, God. You know where they are right now in their season, in the season of their life. You know what they need, Father. You know they're reaching out and you know what you've placed in them to give birth to. Heavenly Father, I ask right now for those who are here who feel ashamed, they feel distanced, they feel guilty, um, they feel cut off from you. I ask that those who are in that in that season in their, of, of their life where they just feel um, just distant, I ask that you allow them to experience what true restoration is. God, touch them right now. God, give them um, just the loving embrace that you want to give us as our Father and allow them to know that no matter what they do, your grace Grace is sufficient to be able to restore them and allow them to become the mighty men and women of God that you've called them to be. Guys, if, if you're out there and you want to just ask God for forgiveness, just repeat after me. Just say, Lord, I repent of my sins and I ask that you come into my life. Lead me, guide me, protect me, and show me the way that you desire for me to live. Tell him I believe that Jesus died, hung on a cross, and resurrected and he died for our sins. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for your blood. I thank you for your transformation. I thank you for our salvation. And I ask that you please just be the head of my life and guide me to become the mighty man or woman of God that you desire for me to be. Guys, I hope that this helps you guys. It is so, yes, Kevin said, and so it is. Amen. Guys, I pray that you guys are able to truly experience just the amazing supernatural power of God in your life. You know, you are on this call because there's something in you saying there's more in the world for me. Where do I find it? <laughs> so you got on here today and you get an opportunity to get a, 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 um, a sneak peek. And I have on a shirt that a guy gave me in Atlanta. It says, your dreams don't care how you feel, right? Your dreams don't care how you feel. And I will say that about your vision. 
Your vision is not about how you feel. It's about you being called before the foundations of the earth to do great and mighty things in the name of the Lord. So y'all go and pray and seek the face of God. I can't wait to hear about the amazing testimonies that will come out of our few moments together. And I'm going to shut this down. So you guys have a great and awesome day. And I will see y'all. I think today is Thursday, right? I can't keep up. See y'all next week. Okay. If you want to join us, go to businessismyministry.co. I do a brief after show there. Businessismyministry.co. And I will see you over there just real quick. I do a little short excerpt over there. Um, and other than that, I'll see y'all next Tuesday. All right. Have a good one, y'all. Bye.